Hey guys, welcome to Feed Yourself. My name is Jack and I love to cook, bake, consume and feed. This will be my first video of what I hope is many, but we'll see how my editing skills pan out, so please bear with me. I am hoping they get better. I thought it was only fitting that since I'm a Kiwi and it's pretty much summer here in Michigan that we start off with a pavlova. For those of you that don't know what a pavlova is, a pavlova is a meringue with a crunchy exterior and a fluffy marshmallowy interior and it's usually topped with cream and fruit but you can pretty much put whatever you want on top. This is just a quick side note, Australians love to claim this dessert as theirs but we all know it's a kiwi dessert. You guys need to stop playing so let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need to do is preheat your oven to 275 Fahrenheit. You're then going to need six egg whites and the way that I separate my eggs is by cracking the eggs into a clean bowl and then I scoop up the yolk with my fingers, I give it a little wiggle until the yolk is completely clean and then I pop that into another bowl. If you do not trust yourself not to pop the yolk, you can pop each egg white into the mixer bowl so that way you only lose like one egg opposed to the entire bowl. If you're like myself and like to live your life on the dangerous side, or let's be honest, just lazy, scrambled eggs is something I love to eat a lot while I'm making bevlova. In saying that, I did pop a little bit of egg yolk just before and I had to use the eggshell to kind of like scoop it up, but we were safe, it was fine, no big deal. You keep doing this until you have all six egg whites and you can pop the egg whites in the mixer bowl and then the egg yolks in the fridge and with the yolks you can make lemon curd or semi fredo. Both have high sugar content so you know they're going to be good. So I completely forgot to mention that your egg whites need to be at room temperature. So once you have your room temperature egg whites and you pop them in the bowl, before we start actually adding the sugar. You kind of need the egg whites to be a little bit foamy and almost soft peaks. This will take a few minutes, be patient and once we are there I'll show you and then we can start adding the sugar. So as you can see our egg whites have gotten super foamy and we have reached soft peaks. So this is the time that you want to start adding the sugar. So go grab 325 grams of super fine sugar. I cannot stress how fine it has to be. And then you want to turn the mixer back on at medium speed and begin adding the sugar a spoon at a time. If you don't have fine sugar, you can process granulated sugar a few times. And to level it up, you can take the seeds from a vanilla pod and chuck that in the processor with the sugar. And now you have vanilla sugar. However, do not process the actual vanilla pod though, because I definitely know my brother would if I just left it like that. So while we are waiting for the meringue to reach stiff peaks, you need to get two teaspoons of corn flour, also known as cornstarch, and two teaspoons of lemon juice. So this is going to help stabilize the meringue a bit better and also produce an overall better meringue. It's a lot fluffier, there's less deflation, and that's kind of what we are trying to achieve. So go get that ready until we get to stiff peaks. So as you can see here, We've still got soft peaks, like it's getting a little bit firmer. The fact that it dropped off the actual whisk means that it is not ready. There was too much movement. We need stiff peaks for this to be ready and before we can actually add in the rest of the ingredients. If you do get any fallout, honestly, just eat it. It tastes so good. It's been about eight minutes since I added my last spoonful of sugar and we just needed to check how far along the meringue is. As we can see, we've still not reached stiff peaks as the tip flops over when I do the finger touch. So we're not ready yet to add the cornstarch slurry. We'll give it a few more minutes on medium speed. And the reason we're doing medium speed and not high is because we don't want to add air quickly to the meringue as that's how pavlovas can deflate. But when we add our slurry, that will actually be on a high speed. 
So every few minutes you're going to need to check on your meringue. I have done a pavlova enough times to know when I'm about to reach stiff peaks. I can usually see it in the bowl and you'll be able to start seeing that too. So right now I am almost there. It will honestly take about 30 seconds to maximum a minute of a high speed whisk for it to actually reach stiff peaks. So at this point in time, I am ready to add my cornstarch slurry. So just mix the lemon juice with the cornstarch together and then pop it in the bowl, put the mixer on the highest speed, but gradually go up. Don't just flick it all the way over and then give it about 30 seconds. Well, 30 seconds to a minute. And then by that time you would have reached stiff peaks, but you can always go in with a finger check and see if you've got a pointy peak or a little bit of a slope. If it's a little bit of slope, literally do it in 10 second batches. This will also be the time that you'll add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I use vanilla sugar so I don't have to do that, but add it now if this is the case. We have finally reached the point of stiff peaks. And as you can see, I've done the little finger touch and the peak is pointy, it doesn't flop over. So we are finally ready to begin shaping our meringue. You want to grab a baking tray dollop meringue in the corners and that's simply there just to stabilize the parchment paper so it doesn't slide and move around while you're trying to shape your meringue. So you don't have to do this but I've essentially traced the outline of a nine inch cake tin and that's just there to kind of make my pavlova a circular shape as best as I can but again you don't have to do this. So you want to start by piling the meringue in the middle. So just do that scoop by scoop and pile as high as you can. Some of it will fall to the side, don't stress. As you begin to shape it, it will all work out. To shape the pavlova, I will be using two offset spatulas. If you don't have these, don't worry about it. Just use a normal spatula and try and follow what I'm doing. So shaping a pav is hard to explain. You essentially want to flatten it to be about two to three inches high instead of a complete mountain. And the way that I do that is by working from the inside out. So I push the middle down to create a well. And then I run my spatula around the sides to collect any bits that have exploded out or fallen off. And then I put it back into the middle and it becomes a rinse repeat situation until I get my desired shape, preferably circular, but sometimes, you know, things happen. Do not stress about the shape of your pav. You could have the perfect first pav and then your 10th pav could be a complete disaster. Just remember, pavlovas are temperamental beans, but they're still delicious. Just to make it look really pretty, I took my small offset spatula to the sides and I brought it in, as you can just see, and it creates a really stunning design. I love it. You don't have to do this, but if you want to, I would definitely recommend it. Now that our pavlova has been shaped, we are ready to chuck it into a preheated oven of 275 Fahrenheit for nine minutes. After nine minutes, you wanna bring the temperature down to 210 Fahrenheit and you wanna bake it for a further 90 minutes. 90, not 19 in case people can't understand my accent. Your pavlova needs to cool for a minimum of four hours. So the oven cannot be touched, it cannot be open. It just has to be left alone to naturally cool. Just keep that in mind when you bake this pavlova. It is the next day here in the FYS kitchen and our pav has completely cooled and we're ready to get this thing dressed. You are going to get 350 mils of heavy whipping cream you're going to pop that into the stand mixer along with a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now, if you would like your cream a little bit sweeter, you can go ahead and add three tablespoons of icing sugar. I personally don't do that purely because a pavlova is sweet enough. It is egg whites and sugar. So I kind of like to break up the sweetness by having something a little bit refreshing. So I keep it as is. Now you're going to want to whip this for about five minutes on medium speed. You do not want to over whip it. Just keep an eye on it because the moment it turns to butter, you're going to have to start again. Also, don't do a me and forget to plug in the mixer. 
On a positive note, we have now reached Stiff Peaks again, yay. Have a quick taste to make sure it doesn't taste like butter and then you can roll on to the next step. I'm so sorry guys, I made the mistake of taking the pavlova off the baking tray onto a plate off screen. So don't mind the wee cracks that form on the pavlova. Currently it is summer here, which means it is a bit humid in my kitchen. And that means the meringue begins to absorb the water from the air. It's not a big deal. I deal with it. However, I have made Christmas pavlovas in Michigan and it's winter and they always come out perfect. But you make do with what you've got. So I am going to break the center of my pavlova. I don't normally do this, but I wanted a lot of cream this time. So I kind of like broke it to kind of add extra cream in there. Now you can top this with whatever fruit you have. This is just the fruit that I have in my fridge. So I had blackberries, I also had some passion fruit juice, some mangoes and strawberries, and I'm just going to sprinkle that on top. You can make it look pretty, but honestly I don't. The moment I crack into it, it becomes a delicious hot mess, so I don't even bother. But we have this every Christmas, and every Christmas me and my brother fight over the last piece. Besides my last Christmas in Australia, where my mom ate the whole thing by herself. We didn't know whether to be upset or impressed because she doesn't even have a sweet tooth. But good thing we did have a backup have that we could just dress. Seriously guys, how good does that look? It is so pretty. This is my favorite dessert and my brother's unfortunately. Maybe now he can watch this video and go make his own pav. Thanks guys for watching. Go to your kitchen, feed yourself and your family pav. I'm gonna go eat this whole thing. Take care.